It's a passage in the canon where the Buddha is advising the monks to do breath meditation. And one of the monks volunteers the fact that he does breath meditation already. So the Buddha asks him, what kind of breath meditation do you do? And the monk says, I put away thoughts of past, put away thoughts of future. Let my mind be equanimous to whatever is arising in the present, and breathe in, breathe out. And the Buddha's response is, well, there is that kind of breath meditation. But he says, that's not how breath meditation brings great fruit, great rewards. And then to give an idea of what kind of breath meditation does give great fruit and great rewards, he talks about the 16 steps of breath meditation that are repeated throughout the canon. The first four are particularly important because they give you the foundation for the rest. In the first two, you're simply watching the breath coming in and going out and being sensitive to when it's long and when it's short. You're already beginning to see distinctions in the breathing to realize that not every breath is the same. But you just note that. With the third step, though, the Buddha starts using the phrase, the meditator trains himself, or the meditator trains herself. And the first thing you train yourself to do is to be aware of the whole body as you breathe in, be aware of the whole body as you breathe out. And then the next step is to what the Buddha says calls calming the bodily fabrication as you breathe in, calming the bodily fabrication as you breathe out. This is an important step. The word bodily fabrication here means specifically the in and out breath. And it seems to mean even more specifically the intentional element that you bring to each breath. Because as we all know, the breath is one of the few bodily functions that is both automatic and on it and willed, something you can change. And as it often happens, when you start focusing on the breath, you immediately start changing it. It becomes more of a willed activity and not just something that happens on its own. And you want to be sensitive to that fact. And you want to be sensitive to how your willing affects the breath. And then learn how to calm that. Because so many times the willing part of the breath is based on our cartoon ideas of the body. What happens when you breathe in? The body's like a big balloon or a big bellows so that you have to swell up to bring the breath in and then squeeze out to push the breath out. And there are certain muscles in the body that we tend to use as we breathe in, tend to use as we breathe out. We have certain sensations that we read as clear signs of breath is coming in, clear signs of breath is going out. And there's an intentional element in those sensations, just as there's an intentional element in the perception that the mind uses to tell the body to breathe. And many times this intentional element can be unskillful. The role of intention is really important, both in the way we cause ourselves to suffer and in how we help to bring suffering to an end. Even our basic experience of the five aggregates, our experience of the form of the body, feelings of pleasure and pain, our perceptions, our thought constructs, even our sensory consciousness, as the Buddha says, we fabricate these things for certain purposes. And the best way to test this is with watching the breath. This is why this process of one, being sensitive to the whole body, and then two, being able to calm the breath fabrication. It's so important to the breath meditation because, one, it allows the, the breath to get more comfortable. Your awareness is not narrowed down. You're aware of the whole body as you breathe in, whole body as you breathe out. That guy gives you a good, solid foundation. If your concentration is too one-pointed, then you move the point and you've lost your concentration. But if the object of your concentration is broad, like the whole body, and thoughts can move in, thoughts can move out. And it's like they go through a screen on the window. The screen stays in place. The wind goes through the screen. 
but the screen is still there. So developing this whole body framework is important. And then once you're sensitive to the whole body, you can begin to see how you perceive the breathing process. This is where the teachings on the four elements come in handy. We tend to see them as medieval chemistry, right? earth, water, wind, and fire. Sound like the kind of chemistry they did before they learned about the real atomic elements. But the Buddha here is talking about elementary feelings, how your body feels to you from the inside. And again, this can be willed. You focus on certain sensations and the earth element or the sense of solidity gets stronger. You can focus on the warmth in the body. You can actually make the body feel warmer. If you intend to make it warmer, start with wherever you can sense a certain kind of warmth here or there in the body. Focus on that and think of all the warm areas connecting up. You can actually warm up your sense of the body through this factor of intention. And it helps if you can perceive this as possible. If you think it's impossible, it's going to be impossible. If you perceive it as possible, you find that really, you really can do this, depending on the strength of your concentration and your ability to hold that perception in mind. If you perceive the breath element as filling the body, the wind element is filling the body, stop think about it. It is your primary experience of the body, the movement of the breath. If it weren't for this, you wouldn't experience the body at all. The energy in the body is actually your primary experience of the body. We often feel the that the solid parts of the body, that's a really direct experience of the body, and then the breath is something that the solid parts have to bring in and push out. And if you perceive the breathing process that way, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be harsh. But if you think of the whole body as breath, permeated with breath, the breath can go anywhere. It's the energy that goes to the atoms. Then when you breathe in and breathe out, you don't have to fight. You don't have to pull. You don't have to push. And it's coming in and out through all the pores. You may have heard of that pageant of the masters they have in Laguna Beach. Where they try to recreate paintings and statues. And they found that when they make someone look like a statue, you know, as they cover him or her with the white makeup, they found that if you cover the whole body, the person's going to faint. You get Michelangelo's David out there on the stage. And after five minutes he faints. It's not a very inspiring spectacle. So they discovered they had to leave a large patch along the back that's free of makeup so the, the skin can still breathe. So there's an oxygen exchange happening at the skin all the time. Think of it as a breath process. And think of this energy you feel in the body as you sit here, as breath energy. Now breath can go anywhere, it can penetrate anything. If you create walls around it, okay, then it will get channeled into walls and it will be uncomfortable. But if you think of it as totally wide open, that makes the breathing process easier. This is one way of calming the breathing process. In other words, you're not trying to hold your breath. You're trying to perceive the breath energy in a way that makes it easier to breathe, less stressful, less strenuous. You don't want even the slightest sense of effort in the breathing process. So if you can hold the perception of whole body as breath, and when you breathe in it comes in and out through every pore of the skin, just hold that perception in mind and see what it does to the way you breathe, how the breathing process is felt. You find that it calms it down, makes it a lot easier. Back when I had malaria, I remember waking up one morning and finding that my shoulders really hurt, and each breath was difficult. 
And I realized I was holding on to the concept that the breath had to come in and out the nose. And I reminded myself, well, there are all these other spots in the body where the breath can come in and out. Think of them being wide open. And immediately the way the body breathed changed. The, diff the muscles who, that were involved in the breathing process changed. The ones that had been working hard all night long got to rest. Other muscles moved in. And the breathing became a lot easier, simply by changing the perception. So the value of this is twofold. On the one hand, it makes the body a much more pleasant place to be. You're not sitting here with anything solid getting in the way of the breath. Think of the breath being able to permeate everything. So you've got a full body framework for your mind to focus on, and it's easeful, feels good. It's a lot more likely to stay and to develop a sense of rapture, a sense of fullness as you breathe in, breathe out. Nothing's being forced, nothing's being pushed. It feels really good. At the same time, you're beginning to see the power of perception, how simply changing a perception can change your experience. This gives you insight into the connections between events in the body and events in the mind. So we've been here on the first couple stages of training yourself to be a breath meditator. You're not just getting into tranquility, but you're also gaining some insights. And the insights are immediate. They're very personal, very direct, very visceral, dealing right with how you breathe and the way your awareness relates to the breath. So try to let yourself perceive the breath in this way. Hold this perception in mind, full body, breath energy permeating every little cell, every little atom. Everything's open. Think of the breath energy as being connected and whole. And you find that the mind is a lot more likely to settle down. And the concentration you develop is the kind of concentration that is primed for insight. This is why the Buddha taught breath meditation in this way. 